What are we going to wear tonight? Pink brain? I don't even know who it is. Same shit we wear every show, Pinky. And tonight, welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. We have very special guests tonight, Johnny Reinhardt and Coco Ono. And now, please welcome your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque himself, Tito Bonito. I never get that part right. <laughs> Bam, we did that. Cute. Oh, almost. Barely. Barely did that. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another week, another uh, week of 2020. Uh, some good news and some bad news this week, which feels like we're actually going in the right direction. At least there's some good news uh, this week. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Yes, in the chats tonight, remember, we have two amazing performers. So I know you're going to be inquisitive viewers. So if you want to ask any questions to our guests this evening, remember, there is a question mark box that you can put your question right there and I will read it and I'll probably read it to them, especially if it's dumb as hell. Uh, as you know, as you just seen, the this is a internet live talk show. So we do ask that if you like what you see today, uh, there is a little heart section as well here. You could just push that like you're flicking your frijolito uh, and that will act as if there was an actual live studio audience because we all know I'm just basically using this to audition uh, to be a late night talk show host and to pimp my friends out and promote the hell out of them because they're super talented. Uh, I will say really quick that if you missed the Pansy Craze Peep show on Twitch last Sunday, you can still watch it, albeit some of the tracks are muted because of copyright, but you can still go to the uh, link in the bio of the Pansy Craze Peep show's Instagram and still see the show. It is amazing. It's going to be up for another week. So that, I mean, it was like... It was like a festival. Those acts were so amazing. Also, you can see my ode to masturbation with the hit song Touch Myself by T-Boz. I made a music video to that. You can watch that stupidity as well. Uh, also, really quick, I do want to make sure that y'all, if you are in the Irvine, Santa Ana, Los Angeles, uh, Southern California area, uh, save the date for October 16th because it's going to be Muse Burlesque. Finally, is coming back since... I believe March or February. No, February. So uh, we are going to do a live show at the Atomic Ballroom in Irvine. Uh, Irvine, 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 Irvine. I-R-V-I-N-E. California. We're going to be doing it there at the Atomic Ballroom. It's going to be an amazing show. Producer Moxie Gold is putting it all together. I will be hosting and we have an amazing array of performers like Egypt Black Nile, Simone Del Mar, Coco Lamar, Lola Del Mar. Jake Dupree, Anita Cristal. It's going to be a good ass time. I'm sure I forgot somebody. Did I forget somebody? The Atomic Cherry Bombs and Me Sun Guard. So yes, I'm pretty sure that's everybody. Welcome to the chat, everybody. What's going on? It's going to be a good ass episode, like I told y'all. Remember to please tune in to the whole episode so you can watch both of these amazing artists as we get to know them a little bit more and have some fun with them. But remember that if you tune into the end of the episode, all the way to the end, then you'll find out which iconic guests we have next week, y'all, because your boy plans it out. Your boy plans it out in advance. Um, any other key points before I go? Remember, I got a soft core only fans. It's just $5. Submit your membership to me help me out help me out all right y'all also you can make sure to check out last week's episode where i had lisa left eye lopez's sister raindrop on the show it was life-changing amazing episode 14 go get your life uh but i digress because we have amazing guests this week and without any further ado i do want to welcome to welcome them individually to your screens first up our first guest for the evening. Equal parts cabaret singer, rock star, and Hollywood starlet. This fine, oops, already such a professional, such a professional. The very own bombshell. Please spread your legs and welcome to your screens, the incredible Johnny Reinhardt, y'all. Mm, fine as hell. Hey, art, look at that art. Hey. What's up, baby? Hi, beautiful. How are you? Good. Hold on. I'm going to do this for you really quick. Bam. There you go. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me. 
somebody just called me Frijolito, which was my high school nickname. So we're going to turn off the comments for a second. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm only turning Bye -bye. off the comments. I'm turning off the comments so we can look at your beautiful face while uh, we get to know each other a little bit more. How are you doing? How's life? You've been slaying the game, even though they try to take it away from you. Thank you. That's very sweet. Yeah, I mean, I'm like everybody where I'm, there we go, uh, where I'm losing my mind because we're all uh, stuck at home. But, you know, figuring out ways to still be creative, trying to um, see friends in a safe way and um, drinking a lot. <laughs> Listen, my advice is always going to be uh, weed, but I'm not able to do that right now because I want to make sure that you have my undivided and immaculate ascension. Plus, I'm already super stoned. Um, Bless. <laughs> you, but seriously, you've been literally killing the game, not only in the before times, but also you've been very seamless, I would say, in transitioning from being live shows like A Queer Cabaret and you have done Revolver Review, but transitioning that into like, I was every Monday night looking to see A Queer Cabaret on Instagram Live. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, it was really fun. It was definitely a very kind of difficult transition trying to like put a live show online and it was like an audio kind of nightmare because you know, we have instruments and singers and, uh, it was difficult, but when we got it up and going, it was really, really a good time. And we would like to do more. We are uh, working on some like Halloween things. So this month, hopefully we'll have some fun, like live Halloween experiences. Cause you know, this is my time. I live for this spooky season. Bitch, I would, I would honestly love to meet the artist, the general artist that's like, I really don't like Halloween. Like that's, especially us who like dress up, like you're not gonna sit here. Yeah and not love this holiest of seasons. Absolutely. I mean, I always tell people that I got a job where I could just be doing Halloween all year round, like literally. Absolutely, and I always say that. And you, I mean, not only are you a beautiful person all around, beautiful man, you're a be gorgeous lady. You are so, I say this word a lot because I'm not trying to have basic people on this show, but you are so multifaceted did you always kind of know that you were going to be an entertainer growing up or was that something that kind of you stumbled on like how did that work for you in your life honestly it was always part of my thing there's photos of me at like three and four like wearing dresses and i was always very like swishy and flamboyant and like uh always doing shows and then i like did church plays and then i did uh like theater in high school so it was just like in my blood i feel like from the moment i came out of the womb mama Speaking of womb, you have a very supportive mom, very supportive sister, very supportive family. Did they, they were always supportive of you is from what I've understood. Has yeah. doing, doing things like being in the church and stuff like that, did you grow up just being kind of accepted for who you were? Or did you kind of have- Yeah, uh, I mean, I was always kind of my just own little swishy gay self. Um, and my mom and my sister definitely always supported me and loved me no matter what. And they would put dresses on me and put lipstick on me. And I was just living my fantasy and I never really, you know, got bullied or shamed too much because I was just very confident and was just like always kind of doing my thing. And I think, yeah, having my mom and my sister and like a nice support system uh, helped make me very confident, which made me be able to just like shake off like any haters or like bullies or anything. True. And even though it's still always a problem, like you are a much younger homosexual. So I would have loved to have met little Johnny Reinhardt ninth grade and seen that because I bet you nothing's changed uh I mean I would like to think that I've like grown and like got smarter and like got hotter but um very much similar hopefully, I hotter. Still hopefully, same hopefully I uh so I'm trying to pitch to my 20th high school reunion to be the entertainment uh because your boy is celebrating 20 years soon and the first thing they said out of their uh, mouths they were like in the zoom meeting for uh production they're like damn tito uh you haven't changed what's your secret and i'm like i literally have no kids and all of them have like four or five kids and that's the one and they all started laughing because it's true yo but like yep. how do you seem like coming out of high school and getting into college and then eventually taking a career because taking over West I lost Hollywood. You for a sec, baby. It's okay. Technical difficulties. That's you cut out for a moment. It's okay. One more time. It's okay. So what was the last thing you heard? Um, you said that you don't have any kids and everyone in your Zoom was jealous because you look so fresh, so clean. I mean, I didn't say jealous, but 
I didn't say jealous, but just for the record. But yeah, so I'm trying to pitch to that. So holy spirits to that. Um, coming out of high school and then going into college, uh, you went to college or I think you bypassed that, right? No, I did not go to college. So smart, so smart. No debt, no debt. Did, did you, listen, you don't have to brag about that because some of us, <laughs> that shit, we gonna die before that debt goes away, which I'm okay with. Uh, less, but so what less. made you, what, what made you not want to go to college? Was that something that you felt was right for you? Was it financial or was it just, how did that work for you? Yeah, after high school, I knew I wanted to be a performer. I like did theater so seriously in high school. And so I knew I wanted to perform. I auditioned for a, a, a theater college. They only accepted 12 people a year and they didn't accept me. I was very devastated. Um, but mostly for financial reasons, I didn't go because performing arts colleges are so expensive. So I just decided to like, do theater in my hometown, like hang around. I had a boyfriend. I had like a cute, a cute time there. And then when I turned 21, I just decided to come to LA and like really try to, um, you know, pound the pavement and like be an entertainer. Oh my God. And how old are you now, may I ask? I know I shouldn't be asking this. Oh, it's okay. I'm perfectly happy to share. I'm 25 years old. That's what I thought. Say baby, but like, it's amazing because I was also watching low-key a, a Messiah Carey documentary and that's what they were saying when she when she when she came back to her high school for the first time they were like she just really was like I'm, why am I going to go to college like I've been singing my whole life like I know that's what's for me and even if other people were like hey girl you still need a backup plan it's amazing how it works like that because I do feel like I am a college dropout but I yeah. dropped out from theater school and now I'm a theatrical person. So I feel like I'm still, I love it. I like, and they theater. say, oh, I went to school. Well, because the thing is, I tried to do, like, the regular path. And then when I realized yeah. that that wasn't going to work, I was like, let me just be the homosexual that God and the universe wanted me to be. Because that's going to bring much more joy to the world and to myself. Like, because everything else. Your boy was going to be a straight accountant. Uh-uh. If that. If that's not an Enron ending waiting to happen, I don't know no. what is, yo. Can you imagine and Tito Bonito crunching? Can you imagine me crunching numbers? No, absolutely not. All I can imagine <laughs> is you crunch bills in your hand. Yes, I crunch those numbers, crunch the twenties. Listen, I'm okay with also the fact that like, see, this is the one thing that I do feel like is cool about transitioning. And I've said it a million times, but I just believe it the uh, the one thing that i will miss when we get back to normal times is the fact that like we can do a show and i can literally just dress from the waist up finish are in you my not room. Pants right now? yeah no it's hot as hell in here so i'm just i'm giving you the class the business from here down and then there's literally underwear from do you want to see yeah you don't believe Let's see. yes I don't See, tell I, no. I put on shorts, so I have like little shorts on. Ooh, sexy teases at the Tito Bonito show. Give so what is time. what what do you have coming up uh, besides a Halloween October gigs that you can uh, tease us about, or is you know it all hush hush? It's all it's all in the making. So I would say if anyone's interested, they can just follow my Instagram. They can follow me on TikTok, which is the same username which I've been having a lot of fun with. Um, and yeah, I'll just be popping up with fun little things uh, throughout the month, hopefully. The TikTok game, you've been killing it. Let me say, like, you've been killing it like a fucking vampire, bitch. You have Thank found you. that niche. Yeah, pretty funny. And I just thought to do this, like, vampire video um, because I love vampires. I always have. I've always been very fascinated, love vampire movies, love to dress up as a vampire. So I did, like, a TikTok um, with like a variety of different types of vampires. And yeah, it really like popped off on TikTok. So now I think of myself as the CEO of Vampire TikTok. I love that there is literally such a segment as Vampire TikTok. And the cool thing about it is not only did you do it, like you did like a couple different kinds of decades of male vampires, but you also did it for female vampires. And then you mm -hmm. did like a new one too. Yeah, I did. I it did. was like so styles and then one... now. What's that? No, it was like different styles. And then now the new one was decades, correct? Yeah. So I did like, I took inspiration from like existing like TV and vampire, TV and movie vampires. And then for this one, I just kind of did like my own characters of like what I would wear if I were a vampire in like different decades. Basically, it was just an excuse you to like put on everything in my closet.
Listen, that's how I made a Babylon video. I was like, I'm just gonna wear everything and then cut it a lot together, and figure it out. Uh, you throw enough shit to the wall and something will stick. Do you have a favorite vampire of all time? Or movie vampire oh my God. movie? Well, you know what? One of my all time favorites, I just read the book of it, is this Swedish vampire movie. It's called Let the Right One In. I highly recommend mm -hmm. it. It's Swedish, it has subtitles, but it's a really uh, sweet story of like a little girl vampire and like a little boy who's like very shy and like bullied and they have this really like beautiful friendship. Oh, okay, Let the Right One In? Yeah, I highly recommend it. I get that. Let the right one in because you're gonna have to invite that vampire. In. Yeah, you know that about you know that about vampire folklore. Listen, I was a Buffy the unless... Yeah, they can't exactly. come unless they're invited. I was a very big Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan, so the first thing I did when I moved to uh, LA was go to the school and the house. Yes. Where is the school? So the school is technically Torrance High School. And I then the, and, and I know I and I know a bunch of people that went to that school and they're all like, Yeah, we get it. And then the actual house of Buffy is like a few blocks away. Like it's right there. Oh wow. I have to go. I've never gone. That'd be a very fun thing to do during this time because you don't you can be very COVID friendly about it. Yeah, exactly. And and as long as you're not like crazy, I'm sure on top of it, like they I mean, I've taken pictures in front of it because I was like, that is literally not Buffy's house, but that's Buffy's house. Like I know she Bitch, doesn't live I've... there. Uh, maybe I should just dress up as Buffy and go there and film some shit. She heard it here first, folks. Girl, folks. the kids on TikTok would live. They would live. Uh, we're super excited about the news today. I know that you are not only a very, very incredible, talented singer, uh, dancer. Well, can you dance, girl? Yeah, I can five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Come on, Thrive Six Seven Eight. Uh, but you're also political, which is one of my one of my favorite things about you and any kind of artist, because it is very easy for people to say things like "Don't bring politics into it" and uh, and all these cliches that we've heard. Uh, but one of my yeah. favorite things is because, especially art, is political, since politics have such a huge uh, power over it and it can silence it as hard as it tries to. Uh, my yeah. favorite story is the one that got picked up uh, by you last year where uh, you were just calling out the fact that uh, Aaron Schock, the former Republican representative, was who has a history of anti-LGBT uh, voting and support, was just hanging out at the gay clubs and Coachella and kissing on men and shit like that and trying to act like they can bypass a bunch of things. How, how was that experience for you going through that and like seeing that and being like, I'm going to say something about it? Yeah, so to, to anyone that might not know, Aaron Schock was this like Republican politician. And like you said, he had a history of like voting against gay rights and was just very much not a friend to the gay community. Um, and then, yeah, he was photographed like at Coachella and uh, like with all these gay boys and like putting his hands uh, down go-go dancers pants and stuff. So just this very hypocritical uh, guy. And yeah, he came into my karaoke night and I was uh, very shook, very upset. But in that moment, like, as the host and like being in drag, I felt like I had a responsibility to, to say something. And I hate confrontation, especially as a host. Like my goal is to make everyone feel comfortable and happy and chill. So, you know, my heart was like eating out of my chest and I just went and I, I really just had a conversation with him and just told him like, I don't agree with you being here. Like, you know, people aren't gonna be happy that you're here. Um, and it was, yeah, it was kind of a weird mindfuck uh, situation, but I was really grateful and glad that it happened. Um, since that moment, he seems to sort of be continuing to do his same old shit, uh, but that's gonna be what it's gonna be. As long as I know I was able to sp speak up in that moment and like, you know, stand up for what I believed in, I felt good about it. And that, and, and you should, cause honestly, it takes a lot to even do that. But then the problem, as well is that a lot of us feel like yeah you can do that and then look he's going to continue to do the same thing so why try it again and i think the important thing is for us to always understand to like no like the fight just kind of rages on always yeah and it's nice to like offer somebody like a chance to to like change or like do better like give them that grace but like if they continually fuck you over then you you can't really do anything about it you know and you can't really be mad when they get COVID. Oh, blue. 
Fracking? Did I say fracking? Oh, not the <laughs> fracking, girl. Not the fracking. <laughs> not the frack. Uh, Johnny Reinhardt, uh, I did uh, want to also talk to you because you're also in a... Uh, see, I was trying to figure this out. I was trying to be on your IMDb, so I was like, I might as well ask you. The show or movie that you're in is called Midnight Kiss. Yeah, or did so it it's a little confusing. It's part of this anthology series called Into the Dark. And it's kind of like Black Mirror, where like every, every piece is its own story. And they're each considered uh, movies, like full features. So it's part of the Into, Into the Dark anthology series, and it's called Midnight Kiss. And it's this horror movie on Hulu. Uh, Blumhouse uh, produced it, directed by this really talented guy, Carter Smith. And um, yeah, it's like a fun queer horror movie and there's a club scene and I played uh, like the drag queen host and it's New Year's right. Eve and uh, it was a super fun experience and it's a great time to watch it now that spooky season is here. So check it out on Hulu. I was just gonna be like, cause I was looking it up and then I was like, it's called Into the Dark or is it called Midnight Kiss? And then is it, so I'm glad we cleared it up because I'm definitely yeah. watching that tonight. Cause that is the perfect time. And to it's watch hot, it. all the boys are Ooh. hot. Um, there's a lot of nudity, there's a lot of kissing, and it's very, it's very queer. It's very, like, all the dialogue is, like, you actually feel like you're hanging out with a group of homos, which is really, like, fun and exciting, because I think sometimes, like, when straight people write gay characters, like, it just doesn't seem realistic, so, uh, it's, it's refreshing. I love that. I'm definitely going to check it out, and I'll make sure to put the information in the caption for this show so people can find it as well. Um, before we go. Do you want to play a game with me? I do. I would love nothing more. Mm, such a daddy. Uh, such a daddy and a mommy. You're like the whole package. Uh, so this one is going to be called <laughs> Song Association. Boom, boom, boom. Graphics are on point. And have you played this game before? Is this where you're going to say a word and I have to sing a song? Yes. Oh, I should have warmed up. Me, me, me. You don't have to sing well. You can also, I will turn on the comments as well. So in case anybody wants to help or just give you praises, we will allow people to do that right now. Uh, so I'm going to give you a word exactly. And then you're just going to sing the first song that comes to your mind. And I'm pretty sure the whole idea is just to show everyone how badass you are and how on your feet you could think. So I, I the first, gonna you're going to, you're going to fucking nail it like Jesus to the cross. Um, your first word is gay. Oh, wow, really? Um, I feel pretty and witty and gay, and I pity any girl who isn't me today. West Side Story. I, I literally had no, I had all the faith that you could do this. Uh, okay, your next word is gonna be myself. Myself, okay. Um, myself. Uh, oh my God, this one's hard. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Myself. I can give you a hint. Uh, give me a hint. Myself. Beyonce. Oh, uh, oh, oh. I literally yeah. am stumped. I was going to say. Myself. There's got to be a song that's me, myself, and I, right? That's, I mean, well, that judges, judges, we will literally take that. Judges, we will take that. Yes, a ding, 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 ding. That is, you know, because I got me, myself, and I. I don't know that I one. Must have cried a thousand times. I listen. I'm singing for you. That is not in a, a part of my resume. Uh, but that was okay. That one I was hoping was going to be hard, and I'm glad that it is. Uh, yeah, it, okay. was. it was. It was hard, but it's okay. Listen, even if you won, all you were going to get was bragging rights. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not for, there's Just no prize here. Uh, okay, we're going to try something easier. What about the word back? What about the word back? Back. Uh, I go back to black. One of my favorites. Yes, Amy Winehouse. We love uh, some Amy Winehouse. Okay, we'll do two more, and then I will bid okay. you a wonderful Friday evening. Uh, I'm gonna nail these. The next word, you're gonna nail these, you said? The next word is away. Oh, away. There's that Solange song that's like, away, 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 away. And ding, 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 ding. Like we'll take that, judges. We cranes in the sky. Yes, cranes in the sky by Solange Knowles. Listen, not only does do you say it, but then you also give credit where credit is due. That's a full artist, y'all. 
This is a multifaceted producer performer. Um, okay, we're gonna, since you are the CEO of Vampire TikTok, I felt like this is the perfect word to use in a song. How about the word blood? Blood? I knew you were gonna say it. And I'm gonna choose a really lame one. You ready? Do it. I'm so ready. Cause baby, now we got bad blood. <laughs> You know we used to be mad. Bad. I'm in a mini banana. And I'm in a we got bad. bad hey. hey. Oh my God, listen. That was amazing, Johnny Reinhardt. You know your stuff. You are a song Thank association you. wizard. A song association wizard. You, a, a, a An internet virally sexy vampire. You are a songstress for the longest. I don't fucking know. I'm just trying to say stuff. Would, uh, is there anything before you go? Remember, if you enjoy Johnny Reinhardt, throw some Venmo their way. It's going to be a good ass time. I promise you when you follow this brilliant artist. Anything you want to tell the people before you go? Just give me a follow on Instagram and or TikTok and or Twitter. And I have lots of fun stuff coming your way for October. And Johnny ain't got that boring to Twitter. Active. That's an active account. Uh, Johnny, I love you so much. Thank you so much for being on the I'm show. I, uh, say that again. I love you guys. I love you. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Bye. Johnny Reinhardt, the incredible, iconic Johnny motherfucking Reinhardt, y'all. Is this just me? Or there you go. Oh, y'all, that was cute as shit. We love Johnny Reinhardt. Such a talented and humble beautiful human being. In the before times, a queer cabaret was at Tramp Stamp Granny's in Hollywood, California. And then they also had the uh, Revolver Review that was happening at Revolver Bar in West Hollywood. We'll see how life is going to be like when things get back to normal. But uh, that is a beautiful normal. So make sure you check out Midnight Kiss on Hulu because I'm definitely going to be watching that shit tonight. Uh, also, before we bring on our next guest, there's always something that I try to get into my life, which is I want to see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, which Cuban food am I? So we all know that I want croquetas, no whammy. So hopefully we're going to get some croquetas, some meaty ham, cheese, croquetas. <sighs> that is some ropa vieja. Hey, Isaac. Ropa Vieja, if you don't know, uh, is the Cuban food that is very amazing, but it literally translates to old clothes. So do with that what you will. Uh, also, I want to make sure to shout out uh, my damn self entertainment for putting on this show for you all today. Remember to stick around to the end of the show so you can find out the two special guests that we have next week that are going to be iconic. I cannot wait to announce them. Uh, but in the meantime, I am very very ready to bring on uh oh wait a compliment in the comments tito you look so handsome in your bow tie thank you nubian rain i try uh, 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 so hard to look decent as fuck i am actually only uh like a mullet right now i am only business from the bottom half up and then the bottom half down i am trash so uh check out my only fans if you want to find out more about how you can see more about more of that. <sighs> okay, y'all. Enough playing around. I am a silly goose this episode. Our next performer I met working at the incredible bootleg bombshell show that's been happening for the last seven years in Townhouse uh, in Venice Beach. She is not only uh, one of my favorite people in the world, but she is a very multifaceted, I say that word all the time because these people know how to do a bunch of fucking shit, but it's true. She's an amazing performance artist. She works with in burlesque. She works in installation work. And we're gonna find out a little bit more about our next guest who I am bringing on to your screens right now. So please, without any further ado, the erotic conceptualism of Coco Ono. <laughs> Did you like that intro? I did. Was that not like, that felt good. I haven't done that. That was minute. cute. Listen, I also have a, hi. Uh, hi Coco. Why is it so dark girl? Who you hiding from? There you go. Wait, is it better? Hold on. See, everyone's gonna join. Yeah, look at your beautiful face. We wanna see it. Look at you. How are you doing? Why is it so dark? Where are you, in your car? <sighs> yeah, well, it's, I, I, yeah, 
I'm in Kevin's car. I don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> oh listen just my, came... my car broke down oh man see y'all that you can definitely make sure to venmo and cash app coco ono to make sure that i decided you... i'm just not gonna get a car until next year i mean that's not a... i don't drive anywhere that's what i was gonna say it's not like a lot of our work we need to be going places and stuff like that yeah you just uh you know open your computer and and take your shirt off Listen, I'm literally next to my bed right now. <laughs> like, I'm just hanging up on my bed. My love, you've had uh, an incredible life. I was, like, re-researching you, even though I know your story. And just, like, you're such an amazing human being. Such a, a, a just to be corny, because that's my job as a host, uh, a beam of light <laughs> in, in, in nightlife. That's which, really sweet. It's, it's just true. Like, you literally are. You have an incredible film called Dear Mother. I don't want to get... I don't want to talk about things that you don't want to talk about. So if there's anything, you can just be like, girl, fuck that shit. But uh, can you tell everybody more about that film and how the importance of it to you as a human and as an artist? Um, yeah. I am adopted from Korea. And uh, in... What year was that? 2011, uh, I went to Korea to look for my birth mother. And, well, I flew there and was supposed to meet her. And then she decided it was too much. So it didn't happen. I was pretty depressed for many years. And then I uh, threw my friend Whitney from high school. Uh, she introduced me to Luca Fisher, uh, who's also a really good friend of mine now. Um, and yeah, it, that was born. <laughs> but that, and honestly, and it was directed by Matthew Condart. But yeah, it, it was born, and that happened. So <laughs> my my thing about uh, that whole like. Just kind of like, I don't mean to start in a dark place, but it's just, I feel like this whole year is dark as shit. It's like the veil has been pulled over. Like everyone's gone through shit. But my favorite thing about it is that, ugh, that's a weird way to word it. It's just, I think it once I realized that I had to take dark moments in my life and not like sit there and worry about them. So, or not, not worry about them, but create art out of them. That really was a game changer for me. So, and I have not, thankfully gone through anything that I feel like has been you know really necessarily crazy life-changing but I still feel like especially the younger me was always just so enthralled in being the victim and just like sitting there and being like I've gone through this and to see things that I don't experience and get the same kind of emotion because it's it's a short film it's not very long but it's so impactful and it's so like it just feels like a little piece into your heart and it's it's as an artist I can't imagine that that was easy but it's also like I hope that you see how impactful it is to everyone as much as I'm sure it is to yourself thank you um yeah it, it uh it's still really hard for me to watch but um yeah while we were filming it and digging up you know childhood videos it was like it was pretty complicated but uh and uh really challenging to film all the behind the scenes footage and just like there was tons of interviews but now i'm i'm really glad we did that so i could imagine uh and i love the fact that you create so much different kinds of art as well because you actually are now putting on a full production show called sacred wounds correct yeah and though I did shout out Muse Burlesque on October 16th, you definitely should oh, check out Sacred Wounds. It's the same day. You should definitely check out Sacred Wounds as well. The show's called Dragoness. Can you tell them a little bit more of like how that came together and what they can expect from the show? Because um, I never know what to expect with you, but all I know is that I'm going to be completely entertained <laughs> and turned on. Basically. Uh, yeah, so it kind of came out of a lot of conversations, uh, especially with a lot of my work, especially in the last couple of years has been based on 
just being really honest with myself and uh, I guess in that honesty, trying to be, I guess, connect my burlesque and stripper life with my performance art life with my, you know, history. And so through that, you know, the last couple of years, I think my performances have become more political and uh, become more about just hit Korean history and just like Japanese history and like my personal history. So I think through that, I really started to develop these acts that uh, took a lot of time or would evolve over the years. And um, yeah, when everything shut down, I, and also, you know, I have done um, Asian burlesque extravaganza, Calamity Chang show couple of times and it, it just totally changed my world to see so many types of Asians um, just displayed and having these conversations and you know I just thought it was so amazing to meet like all of these performers and so I, I became friends with a lot of them and then um, when the pandemic happened I you know, like you didn't have, I, I lost all my jobs in 48 hours. Uh, you had a lot of jobs, girl. And I had a lot of jobs. And you know, you had a lot of jobs too. But then, thankfully, um, you know, uh, Cyber Clown Girls was created by uh, a couple of the Jumbos dancers. And, um, you know, like after a couple months, I, I started to become a part of that. And so I, I just um, was really inspired by what they were doing. And I basically, you know, in a few weeks learned how to do all of these like tech things and make flyers and graphics. And I just like, I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. So then after doing that for like, I don't know, four months or five months, uh, I teamed up with Wayne Newton who hosts Asian burlesque extravaganza. And, you know, uh, Wang is also a healer. Um, and so we were really connecting on being really silly performers, but also doing this kind of deep ancestral work. And I, you know, was like, I just want to create this show where these performers, they don't have to be glitzy and glam, you know, they can just do whatever like in fact they don't even have to take anything off if they just want to do some like ancestral ritual or whatever you know what I mean I just wanted to create a space where there could be performance art or um uh we have some dominatrix performers like mm. we just had yeah we have a we had a buto performer performer um if you want to make a video that you're doing a ritual like it was just so cool so i yeah i'm really excited um the okay. dragonette uh wang actually came up with that theme and it's basically called reclaiming the dragon lady which is like kind of uh, been like a negative term i think that people have called asian women um being like conniving and evil uh, so we decided we're just going to reclaim that and maybe, maybe we are going to be evil. <laughs> Listen, be careful what they wish for. I mean, my, exactly. do you, what, and so how can people see the show? Is it through Zoom? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's through Zoom and um, the Instagram is sacred.wounds and all the information's on there. And yeah, we have Mizan, we have Frankie Fictitious. Um, Lucy Sweetkill, I and mean, we have, uh, do you know Damien Dragon? He's on, he's going to do some. I'm going to know after watching the show. It, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be really an awesome cast. Joyan is, uh, performing live from the Philippines. Wow. That's yeah. the amazing part about the internet is allowing the no passport performance you know to be able to connect with so many different people and be able to do it like in a way that like almost makes it feel 
like we're not stuck in our houses, you know, because we can connect to those people. I'm so grateful for the internet. It's like, I am and I'm not, but it's of course to a lot of people, and I, yeah, I am grateful that. Um, oh, also we have Jazz Lynn and Lola Chun, uh, and. Basically, half of the performers, I, I think, don't even live in Los Angeles. So we wouldn't even be able to do this. That's amazing. But I love that because you and Jess... In, you're in San Diego. So it's like, we would have to travel two hours. I would have had to come to your house. I would have been like, let me sit in the, in, the, in, the, in the passenger side of your car. And like a scrub and just be like, let me interview you with this microphone that's not tapped into any actual system. I'm just hold it and be like... So what are your thoughts on uh, performing during a pandemic? Actually, I feel like this is like back in the day when we would ride home together. You mean like this montage that I put together <laughs> of our lives? Look at this. Look at all these memories. There is so much nudity. There is so much Halloween. Did you say I, nudity? I said nudity. I said nudity. Look at this. Look at this is my favorite picture of us of all time, though, right there. The one of you the just black looking and at white one? Yeah, and I'm just staring at you like, like we're it's about to so start. Good. You just love me in that. Like you love. I and then, do. I was and, literally not even patting you on the back, but patting you on the neck. Yeah, you're like caressing me. Like you're like, babe, you're gonna have a great show. You're gonna be amazing. You're not. Gonna yeah, I me. think I was telling you that everything's gonna be fine. You're Listen. great. Every everyone loves you. Listen, that's one of those. Those are that's that real friend. That's that real love. That hashtag Coco and Tito love so good oh my god i miss it i love it so much i, I love you though too. say that again I, I love everything you're doing this is great thank you no thank you because you know i'm just i've been saying i'm just tired of having every late night talk show host have the name jimmy or james like i'm just <laughs> trying to switch it up even if it's not me like get somebody else y'all get a female get somebody just, no jimmy found it jimmy that? Kimmel. How many Jimmys do you have to filter through? It's like presidents. They're like, you can get one George Lopez, and then it goes back to Jimmy. Just back to get a, get another James in there. So it's, There's so many unacceptable things happening in the world right now. And that's the... That's, and that's one of them. And that's the, that's the... I With that said, though, I do feel like watching all of us, because the thing is, I've said it a million times on this show, but it's just true. As artists, we have these hiccups all the time. People don't see it, but to experience it together, it's like we always have to come up with a new plan. We always have to come up. Even if you win a fucking Oscar, you could you still got a dog sit sometimes, and it's like, <laughs> and and that's just true. So it's like Look, I've I, been there, and that's why well, you got an Oscar. No, the dog sit. <laughs> I was like, Kayla Tonger, where did you get an Oscar from? And let me hold it for you. Let me take a naked photo sh session with it. But I, but honestly, like, I do think that artists have it innately in us to bounce back, I guess. And to see you doing your thing, to see Jezebel even putting on a whole show and hosting it, to see Ruby Champagne it. hosting, like that kind of stuff, I love great. because those are confidence builders that I do think that we may not necessarily, I think a little bit differently with you, because you are just so like, you're a performance artist, but you also do different kinds and you're in so many different kinds of venues, so many different styles. It's not like you can just be one type of, like it's hard to just call you, can't call you a burlesque performer, can't call you just a performance artist. Like it does encompass like everything. You do so much amazing shit. So now to see you just do all the technical shit too, that you literally, it's just the Coco Ono show. You'd be, you'd be proud. I am very proud. I'm very proud and I'm I'm honored and jealous because I haven't even learned the tech of all the shit yet, but I'm trying to and it motivates me to like when I see you yeah, all. Yeah, but I feel like you've been on all this tech stuff like before anybody. I mean, I know how to do a cute graphic, that's for sure, but like I still need help because if I'm hosting and performing, it's like I've learned watching all the different types of shows that there is no one way to do it, which is really nice. Like I do think the coolest thing is like New York Burlesque Festival happening right now that you're mm -hmm. in that like the fact that it's pre recorded and then even the hosting is pre recorded. So it's just like a here's the video pay per view like that. Yeah, I could do that. But trying to do a clean live show like Pansy Craze, I need a Tito Soto there because I couldn't do it's, I couldn't it's do it. really hard. I, I, I learned how to do all that stuff. Um, actually, uh, Reagan 
taught me like how to do all of that and she's amazing at it but like i was doing it live for the sacred wounds queuing up videos and sound and i was like i was sweating <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot but at the same time too the one thing that i always remember especially learning as a host is that technical difficulties are always okay because as long as you persevere through it no a hundred percent of the time the audience is like loves you even more because it teaches them that they're like not even teaches them, but shows them in practice that like when life gives that you it's okay to mess up. And to, as long as you keep going forward and like the show must go on. And I hate that cliche, but it's true as shit because it's like life goes on. And all we can really do at this moment to keep our sanity is to just express ourselves and entertain people because that's our fucking job. And it's like, that is I'm, true. and I'm glad we can do it. Like I always say this too, but I'm glad that this is, I'm glad that this is happening now and not in the nineties where we would have to like mail letters to each other, you know, like we could still FaceTime each other and almost feel that, like we're that, together. that is true. I don't feel like I've like, I, I don't feel like I've lost touch with anybody. Uh, it, it gets weird, you know, when you're on your phone or computer all day, Yeah. For everything, but even to like order some food or something, you know, but uh, I never feel like I lose touch with people and I can, if I'm, you know, missing someone, I'll just be like, I wonder what they're up to and look at their, And if they're know, not a text away, stories. yeah, if they're not a text away, they're a social media page away and you can catch up and almost feel like you're a part I mean, of I it. know that sounds silly, but yeah, I, I do sometimes look, if I haven't seen someone for a while, I'm like, oh, I wonder what they've been up to and then. But that's not weird because, you know, uh, I've been trying to get this high school reunion fucking entertainment job. And that's the thing that I've realized, too, is that high school reunions aren't even happening the way that they used to because everyone can contact each other and they can see what's going on. So they're not pressed. So it's not that big of a deal when you see each other. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're just sitting there to party and, like, get rid of your kid. Because all of the people in my high school reunion were like, we just need something that doesn't involve children. And I was like, a <laughs> burlesque really, show. I heard you talking to Johnny about that. That made me laugh. I was like, a burlesque show. Are you fucking? They were like, we want us uh, maybe, like, something fancy, like, performances. And I was like, <clears throat> I got you. <laughs> I was like, now this is when I speak. I was like, that sounds like burlesque. I am an award-winning and super comedic host and performer. I can get you a shit ton of performances. Let me get this budget and let me not pay to go to my own high school. Wait, are they are they actually giving you a budget? I mean, they talked about it. They were like, they were that's like for boss. the entertainment. Well, for the entertainment, they were like, we have to have a budget for it. And I was like, <clears throat> so they haven't confirmed me. I'm not confirmed. That's why I'm like, put your thoughts and prayers <laughs> into the universe because it would be the shit and i want to bring like a crazy show if they let me like i'm gonna wait and then if they either way i'm gonna bring jeezy as my get as my date i mean hello like are you fucking kidding me so hopefully it'll be hopefully they'll let give me the whole license to just fuck around and do shit but we'll fucking see because 20 years girl i'm old yeah I'm wait old. what year wait, did you graduate you it's 2002, so technically it's going to be 2022. We just have to start planning oh, it early. I'm, I'm already 20 years. I'm old, too. Why did I think you were younger? You're so much wiser. I shouldn't even have thought that. You know, <laughs> uh, looks can be deceiving, okay? <laughs> Apparently, because, girl, listen, you look hella young. Uh, Coco, oh, no, do you want to tell the people anything before we play a little game together? Besides Sacred Wounds you have coming up, what, uh, where else can the people see you? Um, I've been co-curating Cyber Clown Girls shows. Uh, we do shows twice a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, I, the next one I'm doing is going to be glam rock themed, and that's going to be on October 10th. And I am doing Bootleg Bombshells, uh, the 14th, which is movie night, and... What movie are you doing? Are you doing Fear? I, I no. I I actually decided mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something new. I'm gonna do the audition. Oh, the Japanese horror film. Yes, that's amazing. I want to see so, that. I'm gonna be playing uh, a murderous. Not much is new. An, an adorable murderous woman. Not much is new, y'all. That is uh, nope. that is Coco Ono as Kayla Tange. Like that is. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. Anything else? I mean, that is a lot. I feel That's like you so your schedule's crazy, though. Yeah, and I just started school full time again, so I'm, I'm a little tired. She's tired. Yeah, I get that, girl. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. I also uh, before we go, I can't announce it yet, but hopefully, you are still in my ten year celebration. Yes, I am. I yes, that's what, we, video. that's what we. I just sent you a video. That's what we loved. Oh, girl, it's going to be in November. So we got a lot of time, but we will. I know, but I, you know, because of the pandemic, I've become uh, oh, on top a planner. We love a planner, I, girl. No, I ask people for photos like weeks in advance. And I'm just like, mm. okay, literally nobody buys tickets in advance anymore. So why no. am I even bothering? No, it's day of, girl. It's day, which is before, fine. I, before, I would be, like, on the way to a show buying props at Ralph's. Oh, and yeah, now, bro. I'm I'll like, lift you all the oh, time. Oh, my God, it's two weeks away. I, I need to, like, I still need to order everything. I'm like, okay, just But we stop. love that. It's better to be early than to be late or ne not even on time, girl. That's true. That's why I want to I wanna do it early. I gotta I make it. it I gotta edit it. Make it good. Let me. Let me. I will take a video from you any fucking day of the motherfucking week, girl. Coco, oh no, let's play a game. You want to play fuck, marry, and kill? Uh, absolutely. This is gonna be a good one. I think I did good uh, this time. Uh, I asked for your guidance because um, just wanted to see switch it up a little bit. And if I come up with the same shit all the time, it's gonna be boring as shit. So this is some of your favorite things like TV shows, musicians, inspirations. We're gonna tackle a little bit, dive deep into the wondrous island of Coco Ono. So your first, you ready? Yeah. Okay, your first fuck, marry, and kill is the cast of Shit's Creek. I knew that was gonna be cropped up all fucked up. You don't have to. Obviously, you only pick three. Maybe you can even put another one in there, but these four, I have unfortunately never watched the show, so you're going to have to explain why, and then I'm going to start watching it because I have heard amazing things about it. Um, I'm going to say fuck because it makes me laugh. And... Wait, no, but you got to pick, you got to pick fuck, marry, and kill, like which person. Oh, like, which? Oh, who you're gonna God. Fuck, who would you marry in this group of four? And then who would you kill? Like, who sucks? Who's the worst? Who am I not gonna like from the first episode? Uh, you like all four of them, don't you? This is so hard. Um... <laughs> it can be okay. funny. Too. Okay. Uh, how about let's, let's marry the dad. Okay. Cause you we know. love Eugene Levy. I think that's Eugene Levy. <laughs> And uh, you gonna marry Kat? What? No, no, no! I'm listening. What did you say? I'm listening because I want to marry Catherine O'Hara. I don't care if she's a bitch in the show or not. Okay, so you're gonna marry Catherine O'Hara. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm marrying Eugene Levy, and then I maybe Isaac fuck. says kill Alexa. Oh. Well, okay, so let's let's fuck David and kill. Okay, let's kill Alexis Isaac. Yeah, ooh, we like that's, that. Yeah, that, that's for, that's for Isaac. I have to watch the show. I've heard Donna Hood also tells me amazing it's things so, about it. It's so outrageous and funny, and apparently they started off with a super low budget, and it's like so well done. It makes me happy, and they won all these awards. So. Ooh, really, I know I heard that's honestly I was like, like very proud. It makes proud. me happy to see that these shows like were done with no money and then they it gives become hope. Really successful. Hope for us artists. All right, y'all. Uh this is your next fucking Mary and Kill. It's the Sisters of Mercy. Now literally, I don't know this band at all. I'm educating myself. Listen, I'm gonna have to be this person. Can you even Okay, I, okay, can I can I? I'm gonna say this might be the wrong answer, but I'm gonna say there's no wrong answer. Fuck, marry, and kill Andrew Eldridge, who is the main. <laughs> Can I this just one? all? Yeah, that that's just my answer. <laughs> it's, it's all the the things. Yeah, Isaac. 
Damn. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. All right. And then your last fuck, marry and kill it. Shout out Tito Soto, who just walked in this motherfucking chat. Hey, Tito the, Soto. The better Puerto Rican Tito. Um, okay, this is your last fuck, marry and kill. These are uh, your inspirations. All right. So we got Yoko Ono, Coco Chanel, and David Bowie. Okay, this is too hard. Listen, hopefully. All right. Uh, fuck da wait. Barry, <laughs> David Bowie. I thought so. Fuck Yoko Ono and, and kill Chanel. That's mean. I love, I love that. that was <laughs> Isaac is laughing. Because it's funny because you're saying it like a question mark. Or that, that's that's your final answer. It's not like you actually have to do that to these people. It's just fun because now we know that Coco Ono is a derivative of Yoko Ono and Coco Chanel. The more you know. The more you know. I love doing that. It's so dumb. Coco Ono, thank that's you so, so funny. much. Thank you so much for first of all your friendship for the last eight years. Two thousand thirteen, seven, almost eight years. You've had to put up with me your for friendship. a while. Uh, thank you so much for we've also being. We've had some moments. We have. I'm gonna need to for the 10 year anniversary. I'm gonna try to make video friendship videos for the cast because I've known all of you oh for so God. long. Oh my God! I'm gonna try. try. I'm gonna try to do all of that. Maybe it'll have to just be one montage because then it'll be too full house. But anything you want to tell the people? Any last messages besides vote for Biden? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um... if we have to ground. Get grounded, you know? Just get grounded in yourself because we're going to need... We're going to need to believe in something right now. <laughs> From your lips to their yeah. ears. Like, I don't meditate, but I've been like, I need to just ground okay. myself because if I, if I just read the news too much, like, I get angry <laughs> yeah strong roots yeah no because the strong news, I mean, roots. yeah the, exactly like the news is made to believe, break us believe. yeah in yourself because clearly people out there running things aren't so listen you definitely need to believe in yourself and that is how we gonna make that fucking michael jackson ass lisa left eye lopez change that tupac change i'm trying i know you <laughs> you know what this is what i love about you like just so much respect, like, forever. You literally just find ways. I'm Cuban, like, girl. You don't think they're... <laughs> I'm Cuban. They're like, you can't be in this country anymore. And I said, there's a big one over there. Look at I, that. I believe in life after love. I, I believe I in anything. Really... I believe that in anything that comes out of Cher's mouth. Listen, or goes into it, I honestly... Or, or goes into it. Probably more so whatever comes out versus what goes in, but I trust her. I trust her choices. All right, Coco, I, I love you so much. She I is actually, the rich man her mother wanted her to marry. Listen, I'm so glad we don't live in those times where anybody's telling us what to do. That's for damn mm -hmm. fucking sure. I gotta go ahead to the you. other show that I'm supposed to be in this whole time, but I snuck oh away to God. hang out with all of y'all. <laughs> so I love you, Coco. Thank you so much for being on the show. Hit me up anytime you want. Bye. I love my queen. Love you. Thanks. Show love Bye. to Coco. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, show love to Coco Ono. Venmo, tip, cash app. We love you, girl. Bye. Bye. Oh, amazing. One of the best artists in Los Angeles, y'all. Coco motherfucking Ono. And that is the end of the show, y'all. But before you go, before you sign out, I will let you know who our guests are going to be next week. Uh, right now, I'm going to head on over to Brainstone the Vote because I was supposed to be in that show this whole time. Uh, but also this weekend, you can see the next show that's going to be on Saturday uh, for Brainstone the Vote. Also, you can catch me in San Diego at the Ooh La La Review every other Saturday. We have a show tomorrow, and then the next shows are October 17th and the 30th. It's an all vaudeville public viewing of our rehearsals. I'm hosting and dancing in it, so come out if you want to. Uh, it's a really good time, I promise you. The website is ulalareview.com, and I'll post more stuff like that in the comments. Uh, but I forgot to make images of our guests next week, but I will tell you who they are. We have bright, shining musical goddess Yoli Mayor from Miami, Florida. 
She was on America's Got Talent. And I met her at L2 Can. She is the motherfucking jam. It is going to be a good-ass Cuban time, y'all, with Yoli Mayor next week. And then we also have Drag Icon. Incredibly funny. My favorite song ever by her is Glory Hole, Glory Hole. Something I don't know all the words. <laughs> uh, we have the drag icon Sherry Vine, who is going to be joining us. So we got Yoli Mayor and Sherry Vine. Sherry Vine hosted our very first all burlesque review at Faultline last year. And I'm so excited to get to know more about Sherry and play some games with them. So hope you all had a good time. If you enjoyed the show, there's my Venmo Cash App and PayPal. Also, you can please forward this to your friends. Make sure you watch previous episodes that have incredible talents in them, like burlesque stars and people who aren't even burlesque stars and are stars in other rights. Uh, I love you all. Please vote. Vote early. Uh, please never give up on wanting to make a change. I know it's easy to do that, but let's just try not to. Let's just try to, you know, feel out the story until it's over, right? Um... But with all of that, I must bid you all a very happy Friday. It is your favorite Cuban Missile Crisis, the Miami Sound Machine of Burlesque, Tito Bonito, signing off. Make good choices. I worry about you. Bye.